So hello everyone, this is your Rashid back again with a new video on a video series of CSM Nights of First Sciences. So finally, I'm back with the most important topic and the most awaited topic that is SAM and its impact on the global climate. Now, for your kind information, this particular topic belongs to my research field also. So by the end of this video, I will clear all your doubts. So what is this SAM means? So SAM is basically Southern Annular Mode means it is in the southern hemisphere there are different names of sam like uh, antarctic oscillation like southern oscillation okay so all three names are the same we'll start with the animation first then we'll go in detail uh okay so here you can see that we have different wind belts on the earth surface in the southern hemisphere since sam is in happening in the southern hemisphere we are going to focus more on this hemisphere in the southern hemisphere 0 to 30 we have a sterly zone of a sterly 30 to 60 we have zone of a sterly and from 60 to 90 we have zone of sterly again now in the 30 to 60 region we have zone of high pressure that is mainly produced by subtropical ridge now ridge is something which creates high pressure on the earth surface okay and troughs creates a low pressure at the earth surface now in this 30 to 60 region we have a wind moving from west to east direction that wind is called westerly wind Okay, now let's come to the definition of SAM. So, SAM refers to seasonal north and south movement of strong westerly wind that blows almost continuously from mid latitude to high latitude region in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so from 40 degree no, uh, south to 65 degree south, it moves up and down. And why these uh, westerly winds move up and down? It's all because of Earth's tilt. Okay, for some period of time, southern hemisphere is facing towards the sun. For some period of time, southern hemisphere is away from the sun. So because of the Earth's tilt, there is a shift in the jet streams. Okay, that's the reason why the whole wind belts move up and down. I have already explained this video, uh, this thing in some other video. Kindly have a look on that. I will give you the links in the description. Okay, now the period of the SAM is 2 to 7 years. So as of now, SAM is clear, right? Definition, basic definition is clear. It's nothing but movement of, north-south movement of westerly winds from 40 degree to 65 degree. Okay, now because of this movement, it changes the pressure over these latitudes. So there is a change, seasonal change in the pressure. Okay. So there are some key things that you should know about the SAM. So the changing position of SAM influence strength and position of frontal activity. As you guys know that somewhere at 30 degree we have frontal precipitation. Now what is this frontal precipitation means? So frontal precipitation is that kind of precipitation where two different air masses meet and different kinds of fronts form cold front warm front occluded front stationary front and because of that we have rainfall activity so sam is something which influence position and strength of frontal activity you get my point second point this frontal activity is important for bringing moisture from southern ocean for rainfall so for some period of time this moisture uh, creates rainfall over Australia, New Zealand, Patagonia, all those regions we have precipitation and rainfall is occurring over there. So these islands like New Zealand over Australia will have some rainfall and this rainfall is nothing but a frontal rainfall. Okay. Third, this front also triggers a uh, rainfall impact which combined with other climatic processes. So as you guys know that here in the Pacific Ocean, we have something called INSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, that is El Nino and La Nina. In the Indian Ocean over here, we have IOD, Indian Ocean Dipole. So this, this SAM is having some relation with these two climatic events. So now to better understand the SAM, here we have image of Southern Hemisphere, where here Antarctica is in the center and this is the zone of westerly winds now uh, during sam there is a shift north and south shift of these winds and because of that there is a formation of low pressure zone and this low pressure zone is highly unstable that leads to formation of cyclones 
and then uh, frontal precipitation and all of these things will happen now the area under which precipitation will occur is mainly depends on the phase of sand to understand better the phase we have to look the animation first so here we have india and here right now we can see that a uh, live wind movement on the earth surface now we know that on the earth surface we have friction we have plants pahar and all everything hills and all there so because of that there is no predefined direction of wind but when we shift to height of some 12 km that is some 250 hectopascals we can literally see the jet stream so this is sub uh, subtropical jet stream which uh, is mainly in the 30 to 60 degree region and it, here we can see that it is covering the antarctica so it is not a complete circle instead of that it is it shows some meandering okay it's a basically a, a river of fast moving wind at a height of some 12 km and during sam event it shifts up and down okay so this is the thing so let's start with the phases of sam so there are three phases of sam that is positive phase neutral and negative phase and neutral is just a mean of this positive and negative so here we have a proper comparison between the positive sam and negative sam so if you remember only positive sam just the reverse of it is negative sam so let's see the phases of sam with animation so as you know that there are three phases positive negative and neutral here we have uh, southern annular mode index in past years so let's see there is a winter in the southern hemisphere and westerly wind is moving from this way so what it creates because of this the cold air mass is coming all the way from the high latitudes towards the low latitude and it creates a frontal zones that leads to the precipitation over antarctica new zealand somewhere in uh, southern america okay right now assume it starts shifting towards the pole now let's assume it start contracting towards the pole what happen in that case in that case we have drier condition we have drought like situation in new zealand australia somewhere in pentagonia but at the same time here if if in this region we have say la nina period and during the la nina period we know there is a strong precipitation in this region uh, there is a place called darwin right close to australia and here we have western warm pacific fold because of that we have precipitation in this region of australia now let's understand what is the positive sam so during positive sam the southern westerly winds is contracted towards the pole so everything will contract towards the pole yani it is contracted towards the antarctica so now if it contracts towards the antarctica we have low anomalous air pressure over antarctica right and if you see uh, if you see there is a uneven distribution of land along the antarctica so if you uh, divide antarctica this is called eastern antarctica this is western antarctica and this is the peninsula region antarctic peninsula okay so during positive sam we have contraction of westerly wind so all the westerly wind will now contracted in a very small region all across the coastal regions of antarctica second we have anomalous pressure because of that anomalous pressure we have precipitation event but this precipitation event will not uniform because of uneven distribution of land and ocean here we can see that uh, across this peninsula we have oceans and oceans is having a different specific heat as compared to the land it it can hold more heat than the land that's the reason why uh, during this event if you see this pentagonia as well as uh, antarctic peninsula will warm there is a, a decreased precipitation over there there is a glacier recedement take place and in the uh, in this region also we have some some kind of upwelling okay in the western antarctica we can say also uh, at this point of time there are more cyclones occur uh, close to the coastal regions of antarctica this antarctic circumpolar current which revolves all around the antarctica will intensify at that this point of time 
also there is less exchange of heat there is less exchange of heat from equator to the pole because we know that at equatorial region we have uh, energy surplus zone so that means there is more heat these are energy deficient zones so if the westerly winds covers the long distance a large area there is more exchange of heat now everything is uh, now here in the positive sign this westerly winds is acting like a shield so it protects the antarctica from the uh, exchange of heat from the tropics that leads to cooling of southern this this eastern antarctica but at the same time we have warming due to an even distribution of land and water there is a warming of peninsula so this is positive sam in a case of negative sam everything will reverse so in negative sam we can say that what happened in negative sam this westerly winds now expand to the more region so the low pressure is now shifted from antarctica to this area and because of this shiftment now the pentagonia will cool down now now this region will become uh, cool uh, more cooler than the previous one and there is a decreased upwelling in the western antarctica and antarctic peninsula so let's see with the animation okay so from here we can see the positive phase in positive phase it goes down right this is positive phase so we have dry events on australia on new zealand on pentagonia this is the dry event during positive sam okay and here we have precipitation because of warm pacific pole now this is a negative phase in negative phase everything will shift upwards there will be more precipitation than the normal condition over uh, australia and it sometimes it leads to snowfall also why there is a snowfall in new zealand at that point of time because this air mass is coming all the way from the southern ocean which is very cold and uh, having lost uh, lots of moisture in it so this mo moisture is a uh, moist air mass will then precipitate uh, more snow in these regions can you see this this is negative phase again the precip precipitation amount depends upon the summer or winter okay if there is a summer month precipitation will be different in the winter month it will be different but overall let me be very clear during the positive phase we have concentration of this westerly wind towards the antarctica during negative phase it get expanded away from antarctica so i hope you understand this hope you understand this now here in this photo we can see during positive phase this is what blue region it's a air pressure anomaly and you can literally see the there is a low pressure over the antarctica because everything is concentrated over antarctica but during the negative phase everything got expanded so now there is a high pressure zone on antarctica are you getting my point now it is having some relation with other climatic events like iod like inso so let's see that also so this uh, positive phase is more common during the la nina event okay so this is our sam the stirly winds okay and here we have inso event in pacific ocean either it is el nino or either it is la nina so here we can see that when there is a uh, negative sam because uh, since this is expanding this westerly wind is expanding away from antarctica at that point of time we have el nino so el nino negative la nina is positive okay positive sam la nina also good for us because that time we have more uh, monsoonal rainfall during la nina period right so that is also positive for us during el nino period we have less rainfall in india drought like situation forest fire occurs so here we can see that during negative phase of sam we have el nino during positive uh, phase of sam there is more frequent la nina event is this clear 
Now positive sign, see, it is shifting down, and here we have lanina. Is this clear to you? So, in this way, it affects the global climate. And I will make a separate video where I will describe how it is related with Pacific decadal oscillation, Antarctic multi-decadal oscillation, Madden Julian oscillation, quasi Banial oscillation. All those things I will be covering in next video. So if you give me proper likes on this video, I will make a separate video on this. And finally, this is my website, guys. And if this time you didn't clear GATE or GSI, so please enroll in CSIR course. And right now we have the best offer. So kindly check this out. I hope this video helps a lot. And if you have any doubt, please feel free to ask. I am there for you only. Thank you very much, guys. Good night.